guys, so it is time already for April favorites. One more month until my wedding. I'm so excited. So I have, I feel, very exciting and kind of different favorites this month to share with you, but I do have quite a bit, so I'm going to jump right in. First things first is a fragrance. This is by Pink, the Victoria's Secret Pink line, which you can also purchase at Bath & Body Works. And this is fresh and clean. They have several different scents in this range, but this one is by far my favorite. I think I actually showed you the lotion that I purchased a long time ago. Um, can't get enough. And I absolutely loved it, so I actually bought the little one so that I could keep in my purse, which I do, because I'm constantly, like, it's a body splash, so it's not gonna stay on you, like, the whole day, so I'm always, like, just as a fresher upper. But I just recently purchased this, and you can see, like, how much of it I've used already. It's crazy. But I love it, and it's, like, the perfect little size for your purse, so this has definitely been a favorite. Um, okay, brushes. The Real Techniques, um... What is this called? The stippling brush. It's a much shorter um, than your average like MAC 187 brush. And what I've been using this for is my face cream. I love it. It makes it, first of all, it feels really nice on your face. And it makes it so that you don't even have to put your fingers to your face, which I don't really mind doing. I usually, before this brush, I would apply my moisturizer with my hands. But, um this is so much more fun. So what I do is I just pump the moisturizer on my hand, stipple it on the brush, and I just go all over my face. And it feels really good. It spreads out the moisturizer really well. And um, it's a really soft brush. I really love this just specifically for that. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that I have this because um, I never really applied fa face cream with a brush, but um, I don't know. Something about it, I feel like it maybe sinks into my skin a little bit better, it covers a little bit better than my hands, and I'm wasting less product because sometimes I sometimes would think to myself, like, um, by applying it with my hands, it could kind of soak into my pores on my skin, so rather than, you know, wasting product on my hands, I'm now just applying it with the brush. So I really love this for that. Yeah. And then the new um, Precise, I think it's called, the Precise Precision... I don't know. The new um, kit, the new eye kit that Sigma came out with, there are two standout brushes from that collection. Um, if you guys want me to do a full review on that whole collection, let me know. I know there's other people that have done it, so I don't... There's like a, a hair floating. Do you guys see that? I don't always like posting reviews that a million other people have done, but if you want my opinion on it, I can definitely share with you. Um, but specifically, I did want to talk about the Blending E36 brush which is this one, which is a very, very, very tiny, thin version of the 222 brush from MAC, or the, um, the other Sigma one, this one, the E35. So, but this is amazing for getting very, very defined um, cut crease. Amazing brush for that. And also, oh, it's the performance kit. It says right on the brushes, hello. The Crease E47, which is kind of like a flat crease brush, which originally I, was, I didn't think I was going to like how this works, but I actually love it. So it it's more of like, um, you know, you can apply the color with it, but then you can blend it out, blend it up, and then you can also even kind of line over your liner if you wanted to. Um, I really appreciate the fact that Sigma is releasing all these, like, precision brushes and performance brushes for like the really really fine detailed technique makeup work what I don't appreciate or wish they would do is sell these individually and maybe they will eventually but like even the um the fan brush like this is one of my favorite brushes of all time and I would love to recommend this to everyone but I wouldn't recommend the entire kit that it comes in so I wish they would just like sell all their, their brushes separately so that more people could take advantage because while I love this brush, I wouldn't invest in the whole kit just to get this brush. And same with this. I think the kit's good, but the standouts in the collection are definitely the uh, really, really precise crease brushes. So that are, those are all the brushes. There was a mascara this month that blew me away. I finally, finally used up like all my itty bitty samples and actually threw away a lot of them that I didn't even, I didn't even like them. And they were free, so I didn't really mind getting rid of them. I felt like I was just using them to use them, but I really didn't uh, appreciate how they made my lashes look. 
So I opened up one of the brand new mascaras um, that I've had sitting in my collection. And this is the Tarte's Tarte Lights Camera Lashes. And I don't hear very many people talking about this. Um, but it was, I think I got this black, back around Black Friday. It was like $10 for this at a primer or something. But this is what the brush looks like. And I'm very impressed with this mascara. Um, I am a big fan, huge fan actually. My favorite mascara is Prestige's My Blackest Lashes. But t like high end wise, I really, really love YSL Faux Seals. But I haven't repurchased it in forever just because, you know, I've had samples to get, get through and I really do like Prestige and it's much cheaper. Um, so if you like those kind of mascaras, I think you would really like this. Um, I don't know that I would repurchase this because like I said, I... I really, I love my drugstore mascara, but if you would like to try a high-end mascara, I think it's really good. It's, it almost reminds me of Makeup Forever Smoky Lash, but I don't get the flakes down here, and it doesn't dry up as quick as that one. Um, so I really, really, I really like this mascara. The only complaint that I have about it is I love it when I first apply it, but by the end of the day, I feel like my lashes kind of flatten, like, it doesn't really hold a curl, so I'm constantly, like, recurling my lashes throughout the day. Um, but it makes them fuller, it definitely lengthens them, and it's a really, really great mascara. So if they're ever running, like, kits or, you know, special bundle deals, and this comes in it, I would def I think it's definitely worth a try. Alrighty, so we're going to talk about liner, which is something I rarely talk about because I've been so loyal to my black track fluid line, my gel liner. I never thought I would ever repurchase liquid liner um, because I just, I love my gel liner. But I watched, um, I think it was Nur. she did a tutorial and I loved how she did her liner. She used a liquid liner, I forget which one it was, but I got the Revlon Color Stay Liquid Liner and I really like this. Um, it's a very, very fine, precise, and small tip so you really can get a great line with this. Um, it's also an amazing brush for making like a cat eye at the end of your lashes or just kind of filling in any places that your liner may have missed and just really accentuating your lash line. Um, I like this even better than the L'Oreal one that I used to use because it was a much, that one was a much longer brush where I really like the shorter brush. I feel like I have more control over how my liner applies and I really like this. And I think Unlimited Elizabeth used to use this in her videos all the time. Um, which is what made me remember that Revlon made one. So I would recommend this if you're into liquid liner. I'm still very loyal to my gel liner. But sometimes, like, even for traveling and stuff, it's a little too high maintenance. And I'd rather just throw this in my bag than a gel liner and a, and a brush that you're going to have to constantly keep cleaning. So really really like this and then also this was another Black Friday deal that I got um, the Buxom Insider Eyeliner it's a retractable liner and believe it or not I have a whole entire overflowing drawer of liners this is the only retractable eyeliner I own is that crazy to you it's crazy to me um, I didn't even know that I had this I totally forgot that I had it but then when I was going through it and looking to see if I had one I found it and um, I've been using this religiously, like, all month long. Um, I really like the retractable liner. It glides on a lot easier than a pencil. It stays put. I've been using this for the last two weeks. Uh, it doesn't smudge. It doesn't transfer. It doesn't come up here. Sometimes my, um, like, Max Feline, if you line your, line your eyes, and later on throughout the day I would notice, like, a black line here from that. This is smudge budge. I'm not going to say waterproof, but it's smudge proof. Um, it doesn't transfer. It stays on. It's really easy to use, and I love the twist up and the fact that you don't have to sharpen. So I'm a big fan of these. I feel like I'm, you know, came out from under my rock and started using mechanical or um, retractable pencils. So I'm definitely going to do a clean out of my eyeliner drawer and maybe start buying more of these just because I feel like they're just easier and like I said less high maintenance. I don't have to carry a pencil sharpener around with me. But I really do like this. Um, I don't know that I would repurchase this. I'd probably just repurchase, I just would purchase one from Revlon because I think they'd probably be the same. But retractable eyeliner. Never thought I'd really... I think I used to use one by Estee Lauder years ago. And that was like the only other one I used which is so, so bizarre to me. Um, 
All right, sticking with the eyes, I have one eyeshadow to talk about, and it's Max Woodwinked. Looks like this. And I feel like this is a color people have a love-hate relationship with. I happen to have a love relationship with it. But depending on your skin tone, it's sometimes, it looks very different on a lot of people. Um, even on myself. Like, if I pat it down on my lid, you get this really gorgeous color. And look at the sheen and shine on it. However, if you start blending it up into the crease, it almost kind of becomes a different color and it gives your eye such beautiful dimension where that's the only color you need. Like you don't have to worry about finding a, a lid color and a crease color. If you pack this on really dark and blend it up into the crease, it almost gives you that dimension that you would otherwise get from a crease color. So um, this is a color I've had forever. I just I just recently started falling in love with it again. So I really love Max, Max Woodwinked. But like I said, I do think it depends on your wiping my hand off. I do think it depends on your skin tone because I've heard other people say that on them it comes off very orange. So, And the last product I'm going to tell you was my favorite and then I'm going to do a regret. A huge regret. Um, oh my god. This is life changing. And I feel crazy for talking about it. This is the Buxom White Russian Lip Gloss and I think I have found my holy grail lip gloss. Um, I can't even begin to describe my passion for this lip gloss. You guys know I am not a lip, I have recently realized I am not a lip gloss person. I practically got rid of my entire like hundred tubes of MAC lip glosses. Lip glosses, I hate them. I do still really like the MAC cream sheen glosses. I like their kissable lip colors. I like, I love the Revlon Lustrous lip glosses, but I really, I really condensed my lip gloss collection because I just, I just kind of got over them. But everybody was talking about this and I thought, I want to just see what the hype is about, and I totally get it. I totally get it. It's the most amazing, pale, nude, sheer pinky lip I've ever seen. It's almost like what I want Turkish Delight and Smashbox Pout to look on me, but it doesn't. It's like too porn star pink on me. This, on the other hand, is perfect. It almost is like, it doesn't look like you're really wearing lip gloss, but you are, and I... I don't know. I feel like I'm being so dramatic about this lip gloss, but I just need to express my love for this. It's just the perfect color. Like, if I threw out every single lip gloss in my collection that I own and I only had this, I'd be fine. I would be totally fine for the rest of my life. I will say, though, this is not going to be a product for everyone. It does have those plumping, tingly... It's not even really tingly. It's more of like a cooling sensation. Like, it's not pepperminty. It's not as harsh as the Lip Venom. But it's a cooling sensation. And I will say, like, I'm going to put it on now. I have just lip balm on. Um, when you first, actually, I'm going to wipe the lip balm off so that you could really see, like, the true color of it. It's a cream. I'll do a swatch on my hand. That's the color of it. But obviously, you don't clump it on like that. Um, so when you first put it on, it's very glossy looking. And that tingling, cooling sensation doesn't happen right away. It almost happens, like, the longer it's on your lips. So there you go. So it doesn't look like I have really color on my lips, but it just looks really pretty and, like, neutral. Like, not even really neutral, because when I think of neutral, I think of nude. It just more, it just looks like a natural color. So, like, right now, this, the cooling sensation is starting. But it almost, like, it has amazing lasting power, which is why I like it, because almost... Instantly, like, it kind of, I don't know how to describe it, it kind of, like, dies down a little bit, so it's not so shiny glossy, but it more, it, I feel like it does work when they say that it's, like, a plumping color. Like, it almost gives you that, like, bee stung, pouty, pouty, pouty lip, like Angelina Jolie. Maybe not as dramatic as that, but I absolutely love this lip gloss. It is constantly sold out at my Sephora. It is constantly sold out online. I have already tried several times to do the little email me when available, and every time they email me and I go on to buy it, it's sold out again. Like, holy hot commodity. Um, ridiculous. Like, I've never seen that with any product I've ever been after before, but it's not like me at all to purchase backups of anything. Ever. Like, I have maybe three backups of favorite, favorite products. I haven't even come close to finishing this, and I'm already searching for a backup. Like, that's how much I love this color. 
Um, it's just gorgeous and it feels amazing on your lips. It's not drying. It doesn't feel drying. It just feels like cooling. I don't think it would be painful to anybody. I don't know. I highly would suggest this. I highly suggest this. There's other colors in the in the cream polish line. So if you want to experiment with more colors, definitely you'll have a better shot at getting them because they're not ever sold out. But if you want just like a nude, natural, pretty, pouty lip, White Russian is your color. So that is all of my favorites. I'm going to tell you about one regret, and it is these Impress by Kiss. I think it's by Kiss, yeah. Uh press on manicure and I'm first gonna say that I absolutely love the packaging like how cute is this it's like a little nail polish bottle you take off the top and then opens like this and like you have all your little nails and I love the concept of this because I don't know about you but if you've ever purchased like press on nails before there's really no functional packaging and I love this I love the packaging I like the whole idea of it so I just went for like the neutral French manicure and I put them on this morning and from far away they look nice, but up close they look so fake. So, so fake. Like, here's the thing though, I might just not be the best person to try these out because my nails are pretty much just as long as these. My natural nails, like some of them I went to try on, my nail was like longer than the actual fake nail. But they're basically like press-on nails but without the glue. They have an adhesive you peel off and then you stick them on. I just, I think I would have been better off with a color rather than the French because these just look totally fake to me um, and maybe I should have went further down I mean I don't know I tried to go like further down but they're just too thick like I almost wanted to take a buffer and like try to buff this down they're really really thick and I feel like if I buff this down then they would have blended in with my natural nail a little bit better um, I mean like I said from far away they look nice but I really don't like these. I think they look cheap. They look fake. I'm going to be taking these off after the video, but I wanted to just share that with you. Um, but I do like the concept of them. They were super easy to apply. I just don't think the French is for me. I would definitely try like a color or a design. Maybe not even design. I would probably just try a color. But I like the idea of them. One big thing that's annoying is like when I brush my hands through my hair, my hair gets like stuck underneath that. Um, I just, yeah, it's... It's really not not good for me. Um, I just the, really the only reason I bought these was because I was kind of in the mood for a French manicure. But when I pay to have them done at the salon, the French chips in like a day. So I thought this would be like a nice way to get like you know a French, but without having to worry about spending money and then having it be a waste. So I think these were like seven dollars, which really not that bad. Um, like I said, like the concept. I just don't think the French tips and I am the right person to try these. So I definitely did want to share that with you. But I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing my April favorites. Um, I hope that you're all doing well. I don't know what that was. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!